the history of the racial ethnic diversity special interest group started from really women um, from this organization because they understand to a certain level one of the gender issues and so um, they from this the history they they wanted to um, equalize the the clinicians at, in AGPA and so um, they got together and you know as women do collectively um, started doing the work and started to become more powerful within the organization. One of the goals is to increase the presence and awareness of ethnic diversity into the profession uh, as a group facilitator and mental health in general, um, to increase opportunities for leadership, and to talk about that elephant in the room because it's a very obvious form of difference, which I think a lot of us are very uncomfortable speaking to or about. Um, and a really common response is, oh, but we're all the same. We're all people. Yes, we are all people. We all have feelings. And by ignoring diversity and ignoring differences, that's taking away a huge part of our identities. And so it's a very difficult topic to talk about, but that's what makes it so rich and especially important for a group psychotherapist to be aware of, because that is a, an identity piece that clients are bringing into the room. And if we as group psychotherapists don't feel comfortable with our own stuff, then our clients will feel like, oh, we can't really talk about that. It's too uncomfortable, too unsafe. Another piece um, that we hope to do is increase awareness that there are cultural norms that may be very different from a group facilitator's cultural norms that people bring in different things and so to expand a group facilitator's exp um, awareness of these are my cultural norms and this person here might have different ones and how are we going to make this work collaboratively. We're talking about the international differences. We're also talking within the United States the microcosm of differences within here. You know, I think about, you know, personally I think about, I grew up in the South, which is Texas. And so I've been there for over close to 40 years now. And so I would consider myself a Southerner, a Texan, actually. Uh, yet if you, if others see me, they see an Asian woman. Mm. I'm also an immigrant. So there's another facet that I am international, I'm a Texan, and what else am I? You know, what is visible on the outside is very different, or can be different, or it could be very complex on the inside. There's something that are called racial microaggressions, and that's where people with uh, not of my race or ethnicity, with very good intentions, might say something to me, like in my case, oh, where are you from? And if they, I tell them California, then they might go further and say, no, 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 where are you really from? Or you speak English so well, and, you know, it's meant as a compliment, but English is my first language. Um, and, and so those kinds of things are called microaggressions. And over time, coupled with the hassles of daily living, those can really take a toll on a person of color in particular, uh, resulting in racial battle fatigue, which is manifests physiologically similarly to any other kind of traumatic situation, and it's a chronic situation. And so that's what I mean, is that people of color come in with that. Sometimes they're aware, sometimes they're not so aware, but that's playing out in what they bring in, along with their whatever circumstances bringing them to therapy. Can we engage in these conversations to talk about these differences? And from that, that place, we could go further to speak about similarities. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, in a sim simplistic way, I guess that's what we could, uh, that's what this whole process is about, the racial ethnic diversity special interest group, difference, multicultural awareness, race issues, ethnicity, diversity. And we never want to shame anyone. Everyone is wherever they're at as far as their own self-awareness, um, and the only way to really get change and growth occurring 
is if we can work from where we're at without shaming ourselves or anyone else and just being able to to start having awareness of difference in order to eventually find our connecting in similar places. Mm -hmm. Well, and we know this as therapists, that we're all different, but to not pathologize those differences, I think that's very important for group for groups, uh, especially therapy groups, to recognize. Again, I'm a counseling psychologist, and so we really look at strengths and coping mechanisms and adaptations, and we try to depathologize what people are bringing in. But if a facilitator doesn't have awareness of their own biases against or about other groups, then those will play out in the group and could make for a very unhealthy group culture. So that's why I think it's really important uh, for facilitators to recognize the cultures, cultural norms that each member is bringing in and not inadvertently shame the person or to create a safe place where the member can say, oh, I feel shamed because this is a cultural norm and where the group leader can then be open to learning more. And most people don't want to talk about very shameful stuff, especially if they're carrying around shame within themselves. And I'm talking about the person of color has shame within themselves and also the the others. You know, when I say the others, you know, I don't want to um, presume or assume that just because externally they look, let's say, a white male, that they are um, privileged. So when we can start the conversation about can we recognize the the difference and I wonder about the power in this group so I think that would be a wonderful way to start the conversation in the group these conversations merit much more than a sound bite and they're really deep and they're really rich and complex Mm -hmm. so hopefully this will pique people's interest in wanting to contact us for more dialogue and information And what's so wonderful is within our SIG, we have clinicians who do workshops like Karen and write about these issues. And so we actually have people who are very uh, evolved and aware and know um, what to do or, or really explore these issues. And so in a very warm, safe way. So I want to kind of continue that um stress that again. Mm -hmm. Okay.